Welcome to our video solution for problem 11 for my spring 2020 final exam. Here we're given a power series uh, centered at 4 instead of at 0. And we're asked to find the interval and radius of convergence for this power series. All right, so uh, he embedded in this type of question is really, hey, do you know how to use the series convergence tests? Right? Even though it doesn't say determine if the power series converges, which it doesn't say because, well, it probably converges at some x and maybe not at others. Uh, but by asking you to compute the interval and radius of convergence, you are implicitly being asked to use one of the series convergence tests to determine for which x you actually will get convergence. So uh, I, I think in the past probably I've seen people solve this using one of two methods typically. Uh, one of them would be the root test, one would be the ratio test. So I'm going to go through both of those methods uh, just so you can see how they would apply. Uh, generally, of course, you'd only have to pick one. So uh, let's see, how about we'll try the ratio test first since uh, a lot of people like to use ratio tests. Um, I, I'm partial to the root test myself, but uh, ratio test is as good as as any well i mean okay mathematically actually the root test is a little bit better but okay let's not go down that route okay so uh we're going to take the absolute value of we're going to need the n plus first term so this will be uh, x minus 4 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times 5 to the n plus 1 then we're going to need to divide by the nth term. So the nth term is, well, it's just what we see here, x minus 4 to the n over n times 5 to the n. Of course, since we're dividing by a fraction, we can instead multiply by the reciprocal. So that'll be the, the next step. So we just copy, copy, copy. x minus 4 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, 5 to the n plus 1, times n times 5 to the n over x minus 4 to the n. All right. So uh, let's see. Looking from uh, left to right diagonally, I notice I have n plus 1 copies of x minus 4 in the numerator and n copies in the denominator. So I'm going to get a little cancellation, quite a bit, in fact. And so I'll be left with just one copy of x minus 4 in the numerator. Okay, uh, how about going the other direction? So I notice I have n copies of 5 and n plus 1 copies of 5 in the denominator, so all but one of those will cancel in the denominator. So let's put a 5 there. And well, okay, I have an n and an n plus 1. There's not a lot I can do about that, so let me move this 5 over to the middle and write this as n over n plus 1. Okay, now since I'm taking a limit as n goes to infinity, this first factor, the x minus 4 over 5, has nothing to do with n. It's, it's essentially a constant, so I can pull it outside the limit, right? provided that this second factor will converge. And, and of course, we're going to show it will. So I pull this out, and I'm going to get the absolute value of x minus 4 divided by 5. Of course, I can change this absolute value to just hit the numerator, since 5 is positive. And then I have the limit as n goes to infinity of, and again, n over n plus 1, n is going to be positive, so I can drop the absolute values. And I'll just get n over n plus 1. All right, we can play the usual trick. We'll multiply top and bottom by 1 over n. And I'll be left with absolute value of x minus 4 over 5 times the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. And now we see as n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0. And so 1 over 1 plus 1 over n is going to go to 1. And so this entire expression will just be the absolute value of x minus 4 over 5. All right, now what does the ratio test require for convergence? It requires that this ratio, right, or at least the limit of these ratios, is less than 1. So we have, so the series, 
the original series converges if the absolute value of x minus 4 over 5 is less than 1. Multiplying both sides by 5, we get this is equivalent to saying the absolute value of x minus 4 is less than 5. All right, let's draw a quick picture. So the absolute value of x minus 4, remember this is an expression which means the distance between x and 4. All right, so the distance between x and 4. So if I put 4 on this number line, then all of my x's have to be less than 5 distance away from 4. So if I head over to the right, that would be a 9. If I head over to the left, that would be a negative 1. Okay, so this distance is 5, this distance is 5. So we see our radius of convergence, our radius of convergence is equal to 5. And the interval of convergence is going to go between negative 1 and 9. Now you might wonder why I'm not putting some parentheses or square brackets, and that's because we don't know without checking them individually. Right? We do know that the series diverges if the absolute value of x minus 4 over 5 is greater than 1, or equivalently, absolute value of x minus 4 oops, is greater than 5. So for beyond negative 1 to the left or beyond 9 to the right, the series diverges. But the, ra the ratio test fails if this ratio is equal to 1, which would be these two points, negative 1 and 9. So we're going to have to check those points manually. OK, so let's scroll down just a little bit more. And let's check those two points. So how about negative 1 first? So when x is negative 1, our power series becomes the sum from 1 to infinity. And we have 1 over n times 5 to the n. And then x minus 4 to the n, well, if x is negative 1, this becomes negative 5 to the nth power. OK, negative 5 to the n. Just put this on the side, negative 5 to the n, that's the same thing as negative 1 to the n times 5 to the n, which means I'm going to get cancellation, a 5 to the n and a 5 to the n, and I'll be left with an alternating sum, negative 1 to the n over n. And by the alternating series test, this is going to converge. So this converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so in order to use the alternating series test, you remember we, we had certain conditions that we had to check. So one of those conditions is that we needed to have uh, a sequence, uh, which if you ignore the alternating part, that sequence better be positive, right? Or at least eventually positive. Uh, what else did we need? Uh, we needed that the sequence converge to zero. So of course, one over n is eventually positive. In fact, it's always positive for, for n starting at 1. And we need that 1 over n converges to 0, which of course it does. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n does go to 0. All right, so we actually will get convergence on the left endpoint. So we can actually use a, a square bracket here. Okay, how about at 9? Well, we plug in x equals 9 now. So we have a sum, n goes from 1 to infinity. 1 over n times 5 to the n. But now instead of negative 1 minus 4, we get 9 minus 4. So that'll be 5 to the n. All right, once again, we get cancellation of the 5 to the n's. But this time, we don't get an alternator, right? We're just getting 1 over n. And this is the harmonic series, right? So this is the harmonic series. And we remember that harmonic series diverges, right? So we are not going to get convergence on the right endpoint at 9. So we're going to have to leave that as a parenthesis. OK, so uh, that's how we can use the ratio test. Uh, how about the uh, root test? OK, so, so we, we, we have finished the problem, but maybe you started another way. And it's not too bad to, 
to try a different direction. So uh, if we want to use the root test, now we would need to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of x minus 4 to the n over n times 5 to the n. All right, so we're going to use our properties of roots and absolute values to break this up into individual factors. So this will be the nth root of the absolute value of x minus 4 to the nth power over the nth root of n. We'll drop absolute values because n is going to be positive, And then the nth root of 5 to the n. All right, so if I take the nth root of an nth power, I'm just going to end up back with the original piece, the absolute value of x minus 4. Uh, let's see, on the bottom I take the nth root of n. Let's pause on that for a moment. Here I have the nth root of 5 to the n. Okay, again, the nth root and the nth power will cancel, and I just get a 5. And now you have this last bit, the nth root of n. And so this is one of our, our useful properties that we mentioned in class. The nth root of n converges to 1. So we're going to be left with, actually we won't even need a limit anymore, will we? As n goes to infinity, this piece goes to 1, and the other two pieces have nothing to do with n anymore. And now we're back in exactly the same situation as when we use the ratio test. We need this expression to be less than 1, and we can proceed now in exactly the same way, checking the endpoints in exactly the same way. So we proceed... Uh, proceed in exactly the same way from here. That's an H, not a B. Hmm. Um, so uh, some people ask, which one should I use, root test, ratio test? And to a large extent, that's a matter of taste. Uh, once you have enough of these sort of properties under your belt, My experience is that it, unless you're dealing with factorials, which can be a real pain uh, with the root test, um, that the root test can often be much faster than the ratio test. Uh, so I encourage you to, to try to use that when, when possible. All right. Hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful day.